Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Pat here from Laid Back Languages. I'm a psychotherapist turned polyglot and I help adults learn their first foreign language if that sounds good to you. And if you're new here, feel free to click the subscribe button. If you're not new here, well, welcome back my friend. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you yet another slightly abstract language learning tip, something you will not have heard anywhere else on the internet. So prepare yourself for this and I apologize in advance if it is too abstract and you need to watch the video a couple of times to get it. To illustrate what I'm about to explain to you guys, I'm gonna give you an analogy, something that I learned when I was playing football, uh, soccer if you're from the United States. So basically, I went for a trial at a high level um, soccer team here in the UK, way above my level, but I thought, why not? I'll try and do it. I went and I used to play in the midfield, okay? So I played in the midfield and what I would do, I would have ha I had the habit of doing these great long passes, long range passes, and then I would stand and admire them, admire the beauty of them, ping it one side, ping it the other, and the coach would shout at me, Pat, follow your pass. Follow your pass. It's no use just pinging the ball and then watching it and going, yeah, what a pass. You need to ping it, make the pass, and then follow it so you can keep up with play. Right. So, how do we apply this to language learning then? What I see a lot of my clients do at the start, before they get this really ingrained into them, is They'll start learning the language, great. They can start piecing together words, sentences, phrases, great, amazing. But they don't speak fluently. Now you may say, yeah, well, fluency comes way later when you're advanced and whatnot. Fluency is built from the start, guys. You don't need a lot of words to speak a language fluently or to begin to speak it fluently. You have to build this fluidity from the start. Fluency means to flow. So, bringing it back to the football example. My play wasn't flowing. I used to pass the ball, but I wouldn't continue it. So what this looks like in language learning is putting together a great sentence. For example, ah, oh, I am really happy today because the sun is shining. Great. And you have to lean into the next part. You have to follow your path. You can't just stand back and admire it. <laughs> what a sentence. I am happy today because the sun is shining. Yeah, and this is probably why you're finding yourself getting blocked at a beginner or even intermediate or upper intermediate level. You're not following your path. You have to, and this is why I need to use analogies, I say like lean into the next sentence. And this is how you do it. I am very happy today because the sun is shining. I love the sunshine. When it is hot, when the weather is good, I am so happy. I have a big, oh, how do you say, um, smile. Ah, yes, smile, thank you. I have a big smile on my face when it is sunny and when it's sunny, I like to go to the beach. Do you see what's happened there? Instead of stopping yourself, I am really happy today because the sun is shining. <laughs> Great. I've lent into the next bit and this is how you can do it in your target language. You've got to learn how to um and ah in your target language. When we speak in English, we say um, uh, when we speak in Spanish, the Spaniards don't um and ah, they say eh. You have to start to make the sounds in your target language and this will get you on a frequency at which new thoughts will come to you in that language. If you speak a sentence, I'm happy today because the sun is shining, stop yourself, you then go back into your conscious mind and thinking in your native language, and chances are you will then, um, oh, I, I, I don't know what to say now, I don't know what to say. You don't know what to say because you've gone from your subconscious mind where the target language is being embedded if you're learning it properly. 
it should be going into your subconscious mind and then you switch into your conscious mind and that um that um is killing you you need to make sure whatever it is in your in your language that you're learning there are thousands of languages you could be learning if you're learning french what do french people say they don't say um the french people say uh, bah, uh they make these noises and this is also a good technique, which I'll make a separate video about. If you end up learning multiple languages, you have to be able to switch between languages and umming and ahhing in that particular language is the way to do it. You're effectively switching your brain into that language, into that frequency, because all these languages are held on different frequencies. Um and ah in your target language at the end of the sentence. Have the intention, lean into the next bit. Don't just sit back and expect, okay, cool. Oh, uh, you say something to me now. No, no, you as the learner, you've got to bring that energy. You've got to give that energy. And the more you give, the more you will get. It's physics. It's science, guys. The more you give, the more you will get out of your sessions. Lean into the next bit. Start umming and ahhing with this. And I think the reason a lot of people aren't comfortable with uh, arming and arming and mm, uh, going into the next bit is because effectively you're going into the unknown. You don't know what you're going to say next. The words will come to you rather than you sitting and selecting and translating from your native language into your target language. Now you're thinking in your target language completely. It's coming from your subconscious mind. You don't know what you're going to be saying next. And you've got to be comfortable not knowing you've got to be comfortable being vulnerable but this vulnerability is an absolute superpower this is why it's essential as well that you learn a, a, a foreign language in an environment in which you feel comfortable relaxed okay about making mistakes and being vulnerable this is one of the reasons you did not learn a language at school and i know you didn't because none of us did. I spent seven years studying French at school and I failed. I couldn't understand or speak the language. After one year of learning it properly, doing lots of listening, deprogramming myself and realizing I actually could learn a foreign language fluently, less than a year I learned more than I'd learned in the seven years studying it for two hours a week at school. The results are just completely polar opposites but you've got to get comfortable being vulnerable so i think that's all i want to say today guys i hope this has not been too abstract for you and that you understand what i mean when i say follow your paths yeah this is something i say to my clients <laughs> in session i go guys follow your paths don't just stand there and admire it yeah lean into the next bit go on continuing what you are saying in, in your uh, target language. This is how you build fluency. Fluency, confidence, um, and also it's a lot more fun. You'll find sessions will flow a lot better. It won't feel like an interview with your teacher. Sometimes if the energy is just going, the teacher's giving you everything and you're just going, oh, yeah, say one thing. Okay, wait for my teacher to say something else now. Say another thing. No, 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 guys. You have got to take full responsibility for your learning. And you've got to step into being vulnerable, be happy making mistakes, and you will learn a foreign language much faster. Thank you very much for watching this video. If it's resonated with you, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.